You ever just sitting back listening to some glaive and thinking to yourself, damn, I wonder how he makes his beats. Well, good news. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a glaive type track just like this. I think the best way to think of these glaive type beats is to think of them in terms of sections. And for this particular beat, I'm using three different sections, the intro, the pre, and then the chorus. 98% of the time, Glaive is gonna have just a couple things in his intro. And this could be a guitar riff of some sort, plus like a little vocal chop, or it could be a little synth pattern. So in this beat, I decided to go with a guitar loop. Here are what these parts sound like. Just a very simple chord progression with a very clean tone for the guitar. And for this, I just used the GTR tool rack set to the default preset, and then I did a left and a right. Something I noticed that Glaive and Eric DOA and Aries actually do are use octaves as well, in addition to the chords, to give it a little more texture. And here's what those sound like soloed. And then the guitars together. That brings us to the next section, the pre-chorus. So we got a couple different layers here, but what I really wanna talk about is the filtering that occurs because this happens on a lot of glaive type tracks. For instance, I wanna slam my head against the wall, has this kind of filtering effect right before the chorus. And this is what that sounds like. You can do this a lot of different ways, but the easiest is just to use an EQ or an auto filter and then just automate the frequency to kind of open up. Got a couple different layers going on. We got those octave chords still. Then we got another guitar layer. Got this little DMB break. Got the boom kick from the CM Spark pack. Super goaded, has so much dope stuff out. Got the habit snare. Got a little re-space going on. Got some saw chords. And as you can see, all these are pumping with the kick. And the way we do that is just by adding this little plugin called Kickstarter. But you can also use stock plugins. You can use LFO tool. There are so many different ways to do this effect. And then I got this little ARP type lead that I programmed in. And see, most producers would stop there, but you and me, we're not most producers, so we're not gonna do that. Something that Eric DOA and Glaive do specifically is add a lot of ambience to their tracks. And one way to do this is with super reverbed and chorused out vocal layers. What I did was just record a lot of different vocals, kind of doing melodies that I thought sounded good with the chords. And then I threw just a shit ton of chorus and reverb on them, EQ'd out a little bit of the lows, and this is what they sounded like. I wanted it to just be this like really pretty bed of ambience for everything else to sit on. And you can't have a build up without effects. So we got this little Tachami type effect. Then I hit him with a little sweepy whoopy. And then a reverse stomp. Which is a super easy technique. You just take a stomp and then reverse it and then line it up with the chorus. Next we got the drop. For these kind of beats, I think it's more important to keep it simple and just have a couple really good parts. That's what I try to do here. First thing we have is just some guitar chords. I wanted it to be really distorted and gritty, so I added a little bit of temper. And then I added a high layer of guitars just to complement it and make it a little bit more full. You can also see how it makes it a little bit more emotional. And then something I really like to do is I like to add like little sprinkly, sparkly, twinkle, twinkly kind of just dope ass shit, you know? Ooh. And so the sauce to do that is by using this plugin called Crystallizer. Put it on these high guitars and then just kind of find a preset that I liked. I think it was multi octave crystals. Put a little micro shift on and then turn the mix all the way up. And then I resampled it. I took that audio, chopped it up, added a couple of fades. This is what we get. Then we got the kick and the snare. And so one thing that I like to do a lot is actually use this DS clap, which sounds like this with no effects. Then I'll saturate it. Then throw a little reverb, a little drum bus, a little saturator, and a little bit of a bandpass filter. And so we kind of get this like kind of woody, like room type sound that people like Weathen, who produces for Air DOA and Glaive, kind of uses that sound. And so I like to use that. 
Then we got the views kick. Once again, see him spark. There are a lot of different routes to go. I decided to just use simple kind of sub. I took that part, bounced it to audio, EQ'd it, saturated it at a ton, Cymatics Diablo on it, just to kind of beef it up and give it a little bit more top end buzz. A couple crashes on the one, just to give it some oomph. Something you really want to do on these kind of beats is on the second half of the hook, you want to introduce another element. And so you can do this a couple different ways by maybe a hi-hat or something I like to do is introduce one of the counter melodies that was used previously in the song. And so that's exactly what I did here. As you can kind of see, it just really helps to give it a sense of progression in the beat. As far as the master goes, just got a little bit of standard clip then a little bit of ozone, a little bit of limiting. I always like to have my bass mono just because I feel like it helps it hit a little bit harder. And now my friend, you've got no excuse not to be able to make a glaive type beat. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. In the meantime, here's what the beat sounds like. <laughs>